We are for part three of chapter two. So we're still on earth processes and today we're going to talk about tides. So when we think about tides, we're going to think about high tide and low tide. Now, twice each day, okay, the level of the seas and the oceans rise and they fall. And basically that comes from the alignment of the earth, the moon, and the sun. So the overall learning goal that we need to make sure that we know is that we understand that there's high tides, there's low tides, and what causes these tides. Now, I want you to take out your Cambridge syllabus, of course, look over your learning goals that are under 2.3, and follow along as I go through the hot topics in 2.3. First thing, tidal range. Tidal range is going to be, think, like the range of numbers, right? You're going to take high and low. Same thing here. So tidal range, we're looking at the high tide and the next low tides. So we're looking at the distance between them in order to find out the tidal range. Of course, when we talk about tides, the rise and fall, so high tides and low tides are caused by gravity. So that means the earth, the sun, and moon all play a part in tides. Now, it also relates the tides to wind and the body of water size. So when we think about the body of water, if it's a smaller body of water, we may see a small tidal range. But if it's a large body of water, we're going to see a greater tidal range because again, smaller bodies of water, they're going to be affected by gravity, but we're going to see the tides are closer together. So the high tide might be a little lower, the low tide might be a little higher. For a larger body of water, there's more space for the water to spread out. So the higher tide might be higher, the lower tide might be lower. And this is all due to gravity. So the first type of tide we need to know is the spring tide. When we think of spring tide, think of like a spring that you can squish all the way down and then when you release it, it jumps really high. So spring tide is going to be when the earth, the moon, and the sun are all in an alignment. So that means they're usually at a straight line and we're going to see either a new moon or a full moon. We're going to see the greatest tidal ranges. So that means the highest high tide and the lowest low tide. All right, and then of course we have neap tides. You have to remember that neap tide is going to be the smallest tidal range. That is where the sun, the moon, and earth are at a right angle. So of course, when we think of spring tide, we're going to think that it's pulling like a spring. So we're going to have the greatest tidal range. Neap tide, neap is going to be the smallest tidal range. So that's going to be the highest low tide and the lowest high tide. Finally, the global conveyor belt. Think globe like Earth, conveyor belt. That's gonna be continuously moving. We're actually talking about a cold water current that comes from Antarctica. So the cold nutrient rich water near Antarctica is going to travel up and through the Pacific and the Indian Oceans. And that's where we're going to see water move towards the equator. Now you have to think cold water that's coming in from Antarctica is colder than what exists in the Pacific and the Atlantic. So it's going to force the water in the Pacific and the Atlantic up. Now, as the water moves up, we're going to see it move closer to the equator. Think the equator is very warm. So that means the warm water on the surface is now going to loop back around from the Indian and the Pacific Oceans and go into the Atlantic Ocean. From the Atlantic Ocean, there's the Gulf Stream. And the Gulf Stream is going to carry that water in the Atlantic Ocean up through the north where there's going to be heat released from the water. That heat will be released into the atmosphere and then of course the water is going to travel back down to Antarctica and the process will continue. If you liked this video, go ahead and like it. And of course, subscribe so you can continue to stay on top of Ace Marine. 